Rise of Kingdoms is a game all about reaching the end game. Once you reach the end of Rise of Kingdoms, that's where the game really does begin. But there's something a lot of players do neglect, and that is the early game of Rise of Kingdoms. Before you even get to Season of Conquest, which is the end of the game, you need to be through the preparation season, season one, two, and three. And in these seasons, your account is going to drastically change. So in today's video, I'll be discussing ways to maximize your early game power. Maybe you want to make a farm account, maybe you're new to the game, or maybe you're in season one or two and you just want to get the best value by the time you reach season of conquest. So if you are one of those players, or maybe even if you're an OG player, then you definitely want to stick around till the end of the video. Now we're just going to start off by diving right into ways to gain maximum power and these are going to be for all accounts. Maybe you want to make a farm account and you want to bring it to Season of Congress. Maybe you want to make a new account. All of that will be discussed. And the first thing we want to look at when we're making our account is the civilization. A lot of people say starting civilization and civilizations in general don't really matter till the end game. That is actually wrong in my opinion because the best civilizations for the early game, like the first ever one you pick, is either Britain or it's China. In my opinion, they both have the most early game potential. With China, you get Sun Tzu, the best basically epic commander in the game. You get 5% building speed as well, and you get action point recovery. Those are really important. With Britain though, you get Boudicca, and the reason I'd say Britain is, in my opinion, slightly better than China is because if you get Boudicca early, you've got a very good peacekeeping commander day one, which means you can fight tons of barbarians, level her up quickly, and just keep just fighting barbs and being as active as possible. So she is a really, really good starting commander in my opinion, but overall, maybe the China civilization is better for these other bonuses like action point recovery and building speed. You should stick with the Chinese civilization or the British civilization until you reach your first KVK. That's when I would even consider switching the civilization. Until then, just stick with China or just stick with Britain and you're going to be in the best position. The next tip for early game accounts is definitely related to using your speed ups because there are around four or five types of different speed ups. You've got building, you've got training, you've got research, you've got healing and you've got your generic speed ups and out of all of these which one are the most valuable? It's definitely got to be the generic speed ups and which ones are the least valuable? It's your building speed ups. You'll notice once you reach the end game all your buildings will be pretty much maxed well before anything else, before your research, before obviously you can't max your troops and you'll need healing speed ups much more than you need building speed ups. So building speed ups are almost useless and that's why I'd say never ever use a generic speed ups on building. So if you're upgrading a building from level, let's say one to two or even five to 10 or five to six, sorry, don't use your generic speed ups on it. Just use building speed ups. And if you're out of building speed ups, just wait for the building to finish. Besides like your city hall and your wall, most buildings take like one, two, three, maybe a week at max to finish. And honestly, that's not too long to wait. So unless it's a major upgrade that needs to be done ASAP, I wouldn't really focus on using generic speed ups on it. Because once you reach the end game, you're going to know, wow, all those speed ups I wasted are, well, they're just wasted because buildings really easy to level up. You only ever have two other buildings you work on. That's your crystal mine and also your crystal research center. And both of those are really low in speed up costs. So with generic speed ups, I'd never spend them on building and mainly just focus on just using them on things like healing, training, and some research. I'd say research is an exception here. There are some research things that are very important. The third tip for a new account that is very important if you want to be able to gain power is to make sure you're maximizing your gathering efficiency. And the reason this is probably one of the biggest things you can do is because if you gather more resources, you can do more things with your account, like train more troops, you can upgrade more buildings, you can research more things, and it's kind of like an exponential growth. Because if you can get more resources early game, you can increase your gathering speed and get more resources even after that. And if you can increase your gathering speed, you're getting more resources, you can upgrade your production buildings to make resources while you're offline. So getting resources is really important and maximizing gathering efficiency is also important. You can see on screen, these are all the gathering commanders in the game, and I recommend getting at least half of them to level 37 as soon as possible. The reason I say 37 is because at that point, you can max out the whole entire gathering tree and get superior tools. And the reason I only say half of them is because you can just use the cheaper ones like the blue commanders and the green commanders as primary commanders because your secondary commander's talents do not affect those basically marches. So getting at least half of these gathering commanders, which I think is five of them, to level 37 is going to leave you in a really good position. Also, make sure you focus on Constance in the early game. Get her up as soon as possible. Use all of your blue sculptures right here 
on her. She's going to be the most valuable blue commander. Ignore commanders like Lancelot and the Tommy Gomez, probably butchered that. All those commanders are going to be okay, I guess, but they're not going to be a focus. So focus on Constance with most of your early game sculptures. After that, Dusaka and Gaius Marius, and you're going to be in a good position for gathering resources just right off the bat. Another thing you can do to maximize your gathering efficiency is upgrading a few things in your economic tech tree. Now, speaking of economic technology, I'm definitely going to recommend that in the early game, you focus on economic technology way more than you do on military technology. With military technology, it's often very, very expensive in resources and speed ups, and it doesn't actually affect your account development. Besides it giving you just straight up more power, that's really not that important. Besides maybe letting you in a better alliance as well, this isn't the main focus of your account. If you're only working on military technology and you neglect economic technology, which I personally did with my account, it definitely does screw you over in the early game. Some things you should definitely focus on. First of all, all these technologies here up to masonry are free. You can get them by just looking around the map. But if you didn't get them for free, masonry, really, really important thing to get to level five as soon as possible. After that, you've got riding. This should also get to level five as soon as possible. Other things you should focus in the really early game, things that give gathering speed are also going to be fairly valuable, especially when you have no gathering speed. 15% makes a big difference. It knocks off like 30 minutes of gathering time, which is a lot. Other than riding and also masonry, we're going to look to some more later technologies, which you'll reach these pretty quickly, and that's engineering and mathematics. These are probably the two most important economic technologies, and they should be leveled up as soon as possible. To my knowledge, engineering should be like level 8 by the time you reach City Hall 20, I think it is, or City Hall 16, something like that. And by the time you get Tier 4 units, your mathematics should already be at level 7 or level 8 as well. So working on mathematics, working on engineering, you're going to be in a good position. It's going to save you speed ups. Engineering is just going to make upgrading everything so much easier in terms of buildings. And mathematics is going to save you ridiculous speed ups once you get to the Tier 4 and Tier 5 units eventually, because this 15% research speed is a ridiculous amount compared to what you can get through other boosts like the scientist title or even runes. So mathematics is amazing to level up as soon as you can. Level 10, I recommend after you unlock T4 units and you're going to be in a great position with those at high levels. Some things you can definitely ignore a little bit are carriage. This is mainly just for troop load. Stuff that gives you production speed as well is not going to be as important. So you can see here, resource protection capacity. This is also not important. Things like I said, production speed, they are nice to have, but shouldn't be a main focus. So unless you have to upgrade your chisel or you have to upgrade your metalworking, don't bother with them. But stuff like handcart and also placer mining will be fairly valuable because they are increasing your gathering speed. So the next tip I'm going to give beginning players is really, really simple. And it is focusing on the right buildings. We just finished focusing on the right research. So now we have to do our buildings. And the most important building to upgrade is your city hall. None of the other buildings in the game truly matter. Only your city hall is your top priority. You want to get this thing to 25 as soon as possible. It's going to give you A, more troop dispatches so you can gather more resources. And B, allow you to have more troops in your marches. And also allow you to access higher level stuff like end game research much quicker. So getting your city hall to 25 as soon as possible is extremely important. Another thing you should definitely be doing as an early game player is also upgrading your alliance center. The two buildings you should always upgrade when your city hall levels up is your city hall and your alliance center. And obviously whatever you're forced to upgrade by the game. So there are a few buildings you definitely focus on. Alliance center, in my opinion, is the most important out of all of those buildings. Other than that though, you can also focus on some of these resource buildings every now and again. And if you don't have any resources, upgrade your scout camp because you do get back more resources than you spend on it. So if you're out of resources, scout camp is just a good upgrade. Otherwise, prioritize Alliance Center and your city hall straight to 25. The next tip I'm going to give a new account is really simply just choose one troop type to focus on. For the really early game, it's best to choose which troop do you want to make just your one march for KVK1, and that is do you want to run archer units? Do you want to run cavalry units? And do you want to run infantry? And the reason I say choose one troop is because in the early game, you definitely cannot upgrade all the military technology for every single troop. You'll notice here, infantry have their own, archers have their own, cavs have their own, siege have their own. This is literally hundreds of days of speed ups to level all of these up. And that is really difficult to get in the early game, almost impossible, especially as a lower spender. So what I recommend for pretty much every single account in the early game is focus on one troop. Do you want to get infantry? Well, then get infantry T4, get all the other T4 units as well, and then just focus on the infantry technology. Ignore archers, ignore cavs, ignore siege. It's not going to be very valuable. So do you want to do infantry? Focus infantry. Do you want to do archers? Focus archers. Do you want to do knights? 
focus nights. Just focus in on that troop. And that means the same thing for your equipment. There's tons of guides on YouTube. I probably have a guide for whichever troop you're focusing on for their equipment, whether it be if you want to get some legendary pieces, if you're a whale, epic pieces, if you're not, even just blue and green gear. Focusing on the right equipment for whichever troop type you're focusing on is very important. And the last thing that's very important for the one troop you're focusing on is also focusing on the correct commander for that troop. So let's say you're focusing on infantry, get Sun Tzu maxed out as soon as possible. Maybe you're focusing on archers, well then get Kusunoki or Herman maxed out as soon as possible. And if you're a cavalry main, focusing in on probably Bybars or Pelagius is going to be your best bet. There is one thing we should mention with cav mains, if you are willing to spend a bit of money, you can get access to Minamoto, who is arguably the best cav legendary until like Season of Conquest. So getting Minamoto really, really important to do, and if you are willing to spend like, I think it's 300 US dollars, you can expertise him pretty much within the first few days. So Minamoto, really, really strong commander to have by KVK1. And if you're willing to spend the money to get him right up there, he's also going to be extremely powerful in season two and three as well. So Cavs are easiest to play if you're willing to spend a little bit of money. But if you're not willing to spend money, then I'd rather go with archers or infantry, especially for KVK1, because you'll know archers and infantry do have easier and stronger epic commanders in my opinion than cavalry even though by bars is extremely powerful so now that we've discussed a bunch of ways to gain power once you've fully made your account there is something that i've always heard you should do before you actually make your account and this is join a jumper group and you might be wondering why do i have some person named mg boss on my screen well, it's really simple. He's going to be helping me answer quite a few questions I have about jumper groups. I'm no expert in them. I haven't really studied or focused on them too much. And he's the king of kingdom 2409, fairly successful CC kingdom. And he's currently got a jumper group that is running. So I'll be discussing his jumper group with him. I'll be discussing questions about jumper groups. And if you want to join his jumper group, which we will discuss more a bit later, then definitely check out the pinned comment and the description for the link. Trust me, you guys won't regret it. His group is really great. I've been in there. There's like over 1,000 members. So if you're looking for a successful jumper, his group is definitely one that you guys should go check out. And trust me, he's very knowledgeable with the game. I'm going to tell you once he answers all these questions, he'll be able to pretty much explain everything about jumper groups pretty much in depth. So now welcome to the channel boss, I'm going to call you Skyron, that is your Discord name and I just have a few questions I'm going to ask you today because I do know that you run a jumper group and obviously with the amount of members that you guys have, you definitely know what you're talking about. So first question I'm going to ask is like really simply, how does a jumper group work? Hi, thanks for having me Syndicate. So basically a jumper works by allowing you to have an early advantage. When the kingdom first opens, you'll have your speed ups built, you'll have a a city seven already and you'll basically have a very early lead on power this early lead in power is very insignificant in the long run unless you use this power in the early game correctly you should be using this power to join the top alliances in the early game which will basically give you access to real activity and it'll give you access to all the kingdom rewards you'll be able to go into kvk with the best players of your kingdom all the whales that are spending on chest and such you'll basically basically be able to snowball your account forward which is what's very important about jumpers it's just simply getting in the top alliance early and basically yielding all the benefits that the top of alliance of a kingdom has to offer that is very interesting to hear i definitely do agree with the early game there can be a few issues with getting in the top alliance for players who aren't spending money but being in a jumper group i'm guessing does solve that issue because you get to progress a little bit quicker the second question i do have is what benefits do jumper groups have for maybe a beginning player? Maybe not even just stuff relating to power, maybe stuff like advice. And what about OG players? Are there benefits they can earn from being in a jumper group as well? So the benefits between new and old players are definitely very different. Like as I mentioned before, for new players, jumpers basically give you that early lead. It allows you to create a snowball effect on your account, which will allow you to basically progress your account much faster in the long term as long as you use your jump correctly and you stay around the top guys but for og players the benefits are definitely different so for og players more so it'll allow you to get access to a kvk2 kingdom for your main for example if you jump you do really well on your jump or you show activity you show you're serious about that kingdom that kingdom will definitely be inclined to bring in your main account so not, it's definitely not everybody's cup of tea, but you know, you get to play with new players, you get to feel new drama and 
new experiences and such and you get to be a part of a kingdom that builds up and get that attachment to a kingdom and then you also get to rerun kvk2 on your main account which is definitely very very hard to access especially in good kvk2 kingdoms there's only 50 slots there's hundreds of hundreds of people applying every day to get to those kvk2 kingdoms and it's just very limited access and making a jumper account is definitely the best method of getting access to a kvk2 kingdom i also do agree with you with pretty much everything you said there one thing i definitely definitely agree with is the fact that doing a jumper group can be fun just to like get another perspective on the game lilith is always changing the early game as well so it's always nice to sometimes re-experience that and that is true kvk2 definitely is very difficult to access nowadays um, my third and final question relating to just the video today, and this is probably the most important question, is what does a jumper group do for account development? One of the main topics of today's video was all about gaining power, and I discussed a lot about building and research. So how does jumper groups like really benefit that in terms of account development and getting lots of power? So as I mentioned with the snowball effect of your account and such, It'll help you definitely get your early game tech, your research done, your building done. It'll help you access more speed ups and gyms and such and help get your VIP level up. It's very important to get your VIP 14 as early as possible. It's very important to start building up as many materials as possible and saving for SOC. Because SOC basically starts in KVK3 now. You get all the commanders in the game is unlocked in KVK3. It's very important to start saving heads and building heads early because if you're not ready to act, enter SOC with your VIP level up, with materials ready to start crafting the real equipment of the game and to max the actual commanders of the game, you'll be very, very, very behind and you'll struggle. And it's very hard to migrate back, as mentioned. So it's very, very important to get fully prepared to enter SOC as soon as possible and be with a group that actually knows what SOC is and is basically pushing you as a player to be ready to enter SOC. That is very, very true. Definitely nowadays with season three being much earlier. And personally, I actually migrated my account back when I was first beginning, but you can't do that now. So you instantly pretty much are forced into the end game. And that can be a little bit tough. And I'm guessing jumper groups definitely are there to help with that. The final thing I would like to talk about, though, is your group. Like, what is your group doing now? I do know you guys started just yesterday, which is pretty good to hear for players who are looking to get right into a jumper group. So tell us a little bit more about your group. So what separates our group in particular compared to other groups is that we have a lot of core players. We're in 2409. You can search 2409 right now. You can see our main accounts. You can see that we have billions on billions of KP. We have a lot, a lot of players. We also have another kingdom that's merged up with us, 3006. You can see all their players are also making jumpers. They're all very serious about this jump. We've also recruited hundreds of new players, which you can see reflected in our Discord server. If you see our Discord server, you'll see it has over 1,400 players within the Discord that relates to the jumpers somehow, whether these be SOC migrants, people that are, that are making jumpers with the intention of coming in KVK2, or players that are just brand new to the game and are just making jumpers. The biggest thing that we bring to the table is our honesty. We're very, very honest. There's no hidden intentions behind our jump. We're mostly all just a big, massive group of friends that just like to play the game. We take war very seriously. We don't do all the council bullshit, which can be very devastating to kingdoms like early on. You always hear about councils and council drama. It's it's really childish. We don't do that. We just play and we just have fun. We track stats. We basically do it all. We do it all effectively. We've did it before. 2409 is over 900 days old now. We have three stars on the board. You can see our KVK victories. It could have been more stars if we wanted, but you know, we're just trying to have fun. We're very active. We know what we're doing. We can easily teach any player exactly what they need to do without blocky text, without sending videos for us. It's just simple. It's on the back of our mind. We just know how to play the game. We have real experience. We're not like other groups making big claims about kingdoms they ran that don't even exist. Everything is there. You can see, you can join the Discord. Just everyone's talking. It's very active. We just made jumpers today. We have th over 300 cities already created in the first day. And anybody is, of course, welcome to come and create an account. We're in Kingdom 3405, and our end kingdom will be 3409. So if any player at all is interested, I'm sure the link to the Discord will be in the, in the description of the video or it'll pop up or something. 
everybody's welcomed. There's nothing hidden. You can see 2409 exists. All of our players exist. We all have mains. There's a lot of new players. There's a lot of activity. It's definitely going to be a fun time. That is very true, guys. I've seen his Discord server. It's probably one of the biggest Java groups I've ever seen. 1,450 members on the server. He said already 300 accounts made. And they jumped yesterday. So if you guys do want to join his jumper group, the link for the Discord, like he said, will be in the description, also in the pinned comment, and you'll be able to instantly get right into the action. Because a one-day delay on a jumper group isn't too much. You can easily join in now. So if you guys want to make a jumper account, highly recommend joining the Discord. Maybe you want to farm. Maybe you just want to play the game and fight in KVK and enjoy that early game experience. Link in the description and also link in the pinned comment. So, Skyron, thank you very much for coming out today. Your advice was very very interesting and you definitely helped me understand a lot more about jumper groups as someone who didn't really understand them before thanks so much for having me syndicate so now that we made it to the end of today's video i just want to say that now is your best chance to join a jumper group like i said before sky runs jumper group landed literally today in not their final kingdom but this is their first kingdom so if you guys want to join a jumper group right now you don't have to wait three months you don't even have to wait a day now is your best chance. You will only be one day late. That's really not that impactful on an account. So the first day here, you're going to love it. Trust me, guys. Join the Discord server. Link will be in the pinned comment and also in the description. So if you want to make a jumper, today is your best opportunity. Now, I just want to say thank you all for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one.